Now, folks, all good things must come to an end. In fact, so too must all bad things come to an end, because in reality, the ever-changing nature of the world means that all things eventually end. However, what is entirely less certain is the nature of enjoyment, which is entirely subjective. So whether which be which qualifies as good or bad is actually entirely up to you. However, what is not subjective is the finality of this episode. So without any further ado, welcome to Witch v Witch Episode 6, The Final Showdown. Now right off the bat, you might notice something slightly different about this episode, because we've gone straight into the competition segment without building the vehicles. This is quite simply because I've already built all of Gruntilde's Final Showdown vehicles in a build request, which was actually the inspiration for this entire Witch v Witch series. So if you do actually want to see their build process, I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. As you can see, to take on Gruntilda's truck, I basically went full on Team Rocket on her. Since the only weapon on the truck has to be controlled manually, I had to find a way to really disable her vehicle in order to be able to actually take it out, and the bridge was really the best place I could find to set such a trap. The egg turret made short work of her, and the speedy defeat of her first vehicle gave good prospects for a jiggy time. Now, moving on to her second vehicle, the Pirate Galleon, the more eagle-eyed viewer has probably noticed that something they're seeing on the screen is not exactly quite right. Since this challenge is not to defeat all of Gruntilda's Final Showdown vehicles with each of her Final Showdown vehicles, but instead to defeat each of her Final Showdown vehicles with each of her Final Showdown vehicles, it means that the actual regular in-game timer for this challenge is completely irrelevant. You see, the timer that would be showing at the top of this screen at the moment if not edited, would be the timer of my Grunty's Pirate Galleon against her truck, and now my Grunty's Pirate Galleon against Grunty's Pirate Galleon. And this issue would continue to compound, because at the end of the video, the time you'd be shown, would be the time of Grunty's broomstick versus all of Grunty's vehicles, rather than the time of all of Grunty's vehicles against themselves. So what you're actually seeing is the relevant stages from five different playthroughs of the challenge, edited together and with an overlay of a sixth different playthrough which just has the timer counting down from the top to the bottom in order to see if the combined stages would have actually finished within Jiggy time. So essentially, Grunty's final showdown if we were actually allowed to change the vehicle between each stage. And speaking of stages, as you can no doubt see on the screen right now, I've definitely gained the advantage in the second stage, and Grunty's Pirate Galleon is pretty much entirely destroyed. And so with that, it's time to move on to the third stage of the final showdown, which is Grunty's Stealth Vehicle. Now in this stage, we're actually faced with a major disadvantage, because Grunty's vehicle can cloak, and unlike our vehicle, her cloak actually works. What this means is that while my mechanical egg rockets never seem to go near her vehicle, hers, as you've just seen on the screen just now, definitely meet their mark. Essentially, not unlike the last episode of Witch v Witch, we found ourselves with a vehicle that has completely no offensive weapons and really no way to defend itself. And already very early into the stage, my vehicle has been so very damaged that I can't even simply hold down the right bumper to repair it. I lifted the main bulk of the vehicle and used the X to quickly reattach items, which is a much quicker way to repair a vehicle if you've lost the driver's seat, but even this was fraught with danger because of course her homing missiles are homing for Banjo, and without being in a vehicle, Banjo takes pretty heavy damage when hit by a missile, and of course if you're killed, you lose the challenge. However, rather fortunately and pretty much entirely unplanned, Grunty's vehicle actually got completely and utterly stuck on my vehicle. And once again while completely unplanned, despite having lost the driver's seat and absolutely having no idea where it ended up, I still retained what quickly became the most important part of the vehicle, namely the egg gun turret usually reserved for Piddles the Cat. It's at this point that I realised that Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts really missed out on a golden opportunity, and it would have been really awesome if the game had actually utilised the split up pads like there are in Banjo Tooie, and actually put Kazooie in a gunner seat while you continue to drive. But regardless, even with Kazooie doing nothing but chilling in my backpack, probably doing a Sudoku or something, eventually Gruntilda was defeated, and it was time to move on to the fourth segment, which is Gruntilda's Fortress. Now you might have noticed at the start of this segment, and also there will be at the start of the Broomstick segment, there are a couple of extra modifications done to the vehicle. This is mainly because destroying Gruntilda's pirate galleon or stealth vehicle with the fortress is extremely time consuming and extremely boring and totally irrelevant to the challenge at hand. And so I attach jets and a rocket to make it easier and then remove them before doing the challenge to keep it fair. Once again, I've taken up the manually controlled outer gunner position which is usually in Grunty's vehicle reserved for Piddle as a cat and if Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts hadn't missed out on a golden opportunity, would have been reserved for Kazooie and taken up the controls of the grenade turret on top of the fortress. 
This is really because the fortress is a completely ridiculous and stupid design, and hopping around in circles slowly, which takes one of the three buttons at your disposal, meaning you're only able to fire two of your weapons, while also being bombarded not only by Grunty's fortress, but also by the two enemies that shoot at you, is a really good way not to succeed in this segment of the challenge. And so instead, due to Gruntilda's vehicle not being manoeuvrable and the grenade turret being a pretty powerful weapon, I instead opted for the tried and true tactic of just blowing the living heck out of her, while occasionally turning my attention to her underlings so they don't blow me up. The method took a while, but overall it was highly effective and got the job done. Which means it's time to move on to the final segment of the final showdown challenge, and indeed the final bout for the entire Witch v Witch series. With the unsanctioned adjustments hastily removed, it's time to take part in some good fun old fashioned aerial combat. I thoroughly enjoyed this final segment, and I think it was a really fitting end to this series. I have of course done this final showdown multiple times, but it's something completely different to do it in a vehicle that actually matches Grunty's. What is usually a little bit of a cakewalk actually becomes a rather intense and rather enjoyable dogfight. And in retrospect, I'm actually kind of disappointed that there's not more encounters like this throughout the game. Unlike in pretty much every single challenge in Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts where you either win by a lot or you lose completely, this match was actually really quite even with both of us landing quite a few punches. And indeed, I ended up having to get pretty tactical because I was actually taking so much damage that I realised it was a pretty significant chance that she was actually going to knock me out of the sky. Which is why I started to try to stay above her the entire time and swoop down instead of trying to actually stay on her tail, because I figured if I had the altitude on her, she would at least not be able to get me with her laser. And yes, before you ask, I do in fact get all of my aerial combat tips from Avatar. Even so, hitting her vehicle with a laser is not exactly the most easy thing. It's like it has the narrow precision of a laser or something. Oh, wait. And shifting into the first person view doesn't help either because your view is obscured. Regardless, however, after a brief and rather harrowing game of chicken, which resulted in me dealing her more damage than her dealing me, thankfully, and after a short and slightly dizzying game of cat and mouse around the spire of her tower, I was able to slip in behind her and keep on her tail. And this, I feel, is pretty much where the match was decided. While it's true Piddles was able to take a couple of pot shots at me from this distance, I was able to deal quite a bit more damage with my laser. Enough so, in fact, that she actually ended up losing her wing. Now, I don't know how many of you have flown planes before, but when you lose a wing, it's not exactly the best thing to happen to you, and it puts you at a slight disadvantage. With her speed and maneuverability seemingly suffering for obvious reasons, my robotic homing eggs finally started to find their mark. And in doing so, Grunty's defeat was assured and victory was had. Final showdown has been beaten in 7 minutes and 4 seconds, which is, in fact, within a jiggy time. And so with that, let us go to the final results. So, first up, Nutty Acres. Well, we won that one, not only in a Jiggy time, but even a Trophy Thomas time. So that's one point to me. And in a similar fashion, Logbox720 also saw us beating Gruntilda within a Trophy Thomas time. So that's 2-0 our way. Over in Banjoland, we were once again able to seize victory. However, this time only within a Jiggy time, but nevertheless, that brings the score up to 3-0 our way. In the Jigozeum, victory was achieved, however, I cheated to get there, so by de facto point awarded to Grunty. And then in the previous episode in the Terrarium of Terror, I once again failed to achieve a Jiggy time, so that's another point to Grunty, bringing the score to 3 our way. Which brings us to this, the final episode, and the final score to add. What was Gruntilda's final chance to redeem herself and turn the score into a tie, instead ended up being an embarrassing butt whooping. The final score sits at 4-2 our way, and while not dead, Gruntilda is forced into a lifetime of servitude inside Log's factory. If you missed any episodes of Witch v Witch and want to catch up on it, click the link on the left of the screen which will take you to the playlist. Or if you would like to attempt this final showdown challenge, click the link on the right of the screen which will take you to the build request for the final showdown, which at the end of it will have the layer by layer for each vehicle. And with all of that said and done, and indeed all of Witch v Witch said and done, thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle.